All right, next up, I want to talk about copy and paste events in the browser. So we've got a web page here, and I want to be able to copy and paste bits and pieces of the text. So I have this set up. I can click on the header and trigger a copy of that content just by clicking it, not doing copy and paste. But if I click on it, I've just copied all of the text inside that header into the clipboard. So there it is. Now I can come down. I've got two paragraphs here where I'm allowed to paste content. I've got two where I'm going to copy it. So if I came in here and I hit paste, so if I use my mouse, I can go paste this way. There it is. There's the content being pasted. Or I can select the whole thing and command V, copy V, or control V rather, and paste the content that way. We can select an element or a chunk of content up inside of here. And we can say, I want to copy that. We can paste that down below here. And what I'm doing is I'm actually doing uh, some modifications to that content. So I'm taking the content and I'm changing it. So let's take a look at the code and see how that works. Here's my pages. We've got or my HTML. We've got the h1 header up here. So I've got a click event on this and then the three paragraphs. Inside of them I've got a span as well. So I'm going to do some stuff with the span and just regular text content, the other paragraphs. These two at the bottom where I was pasting the content. To be able to paste content means that you have to set content editable to true in the HTML. This is going to allow you to do things like I can select everything and just type what I want. As soon as you make a content editable, the user can do that. But you need that to be able to paste into something if it's not already editable, like a text area or an input. My event listeners. So on the page loads, I've got a copy event, a paste event, and a click event. So the click event is on the H1, and then we've got copy and paste, and these are on the document. So the entire document has the copy and paste event. We're listening for those. You can attach the copy and paste events to the window object, the document object, or you can select a specific element on the page if you want. All right, so we have that. Um, I'm going to come back to the click one afterwards. I want to look at the the basic copy and paste to see what those are doing. The get selection method, this is the one that says, hey, what do you have selected right now on the page? So what has the user selected? Or what have you dynamically, programmatically selected like I'm doing in the click event one up here? So we'll come back to that. Then I'm going to take whatever the selection is, Selections have a two-string method, which is going to give me the text of whatever they've selected, whether it's one word or a sentence or all the content of the paragraph. I'm converting that to uppercase just to show that you can make a change to that content. That's why I'm writing it out here. This is what we're seeing here, this capitalized text. That is the selection. So what I've got selected, written out all in caps. Here is sort of the magic. We've got the event, which is a clipboard event. It has a property called clipboard data. This is a data transfer object. It's the same as if you're doing a, a uh, select and drag, click and drag of an element, drag and drop. That's the term I'm looking for. If you're doing drag and drop, you need to copy that content so you can move it to a different place on the page. Well, that is a data transfer object. And that's the same thing here, the clipboard data that's a data transfer object. There's two methods. There's a set data and a get data. When you're doing a copy event, you're allowed to use the set data method. When you're doing a paste, you're allowed to use the get data. If I'm doing a copy, I can't, I'm not allowed to use the get data. If I'm doing a paste, I'm not allowed to do the set data. So keep that in mind. Now here we're supposed to be able to put in a MIME type. This doesn't always work well. I find a lot of the times when you're building these things, if you're trying to do text slash HTML, you end up with content where the tags themselves are being stripped out of the content and you're left with just the text anyway. So if you do want to make modifications, you're better off just taking it as the plain text and then make the modifications after you've pasted it or when you are pasting it. So that's what we've done here. We're getting this text. 
actually we don't need that comment anymore uh, down here prevent default this is something we want to have in here as well um, if we don't have this then we're not really controlling anything about it if we don't prevent default when you do command C it's just going to copy whatever the user has selected and it will ignore all the modifications that you've made so we want to do this to let our code run instead of the native built-in copy function the paste we're doing just kind of the reverse of that we've got our EV clipboard data this is that data transfer object we're going to call the get data method and you'll notice here it's the same mime type this is the content that we copied up above so that's what I'm writing out here and it is the uppercase version that's how I know it's not the one that the browser was doing but it's the one that I did I can see that it is uppercase so we're getting that written out in here copy there we go there's the uppercase line 64 that's this one so we see that as uppercase and then down here when we're pasting it line 74 there we go line 74 it's all caps as well so this is the capitalized text from up here the selection that we're putting in now I'm showing originally here on the page right now as it's working we're just taking this data we're creating a text node out of it and we're going to append that onto the paragraph whichever one it is this one or this one when I paste I'm inserting a node now we have to make sure that this is a node this is just text it is not a node it's not an element it's not a text node it is just text so we have to turn that into a text node to be able to append it onto the page down here get selection this is really just when the user clicks here we've made a selection this is the paragraph where we're going to insert that content so if I get selection it tells me which one of these paragraphs where I'm selecting to do the paste um, so we're making sure that it's a valid selection delete from document the selection this is to so delete from document will remove anything that is selected if I do this I've got the whole thing selected when I paste we're actually doing the delete now that is the default behavior but if we're not doing this it means that we're not going to remove that content there you go you can see it took the start of where I had selected and that's where it input this content it injected the content right here at the start but I still have the old stuff and that's because delete from document removes whatever I have currently selected so that is the native behavior once again we have the prevent default that is stopping that native behavior so that our code runs so this last part here get range at zero this is why it inserted before that other content and then insert node txt that is our text node that we've got right here so we select something copy come down here paste at the start of the selection that's where it's injected now if I wanted to do something like I was saying before we lose a bit of the HTML if we want to keep that so instead of doing this with the text here I can create some HTML and then set the text content as that data I still have the data that's being brought in here I can build whatever I want as the brand new HTML and then I can insert that in here so what's the benefit of doing this well now I have a way to target that content with CSS because I've actually created an element up here at the top I've said any span that's inside of content editable we're gonna make the text color red so we select something we copy come down here we paste and there it is now I have an actual span if I look at the content inside of main 
inside the paragraph content editable. There it is. There's the span that we've actually inserted into the page. So you have your choice here. Insert node allows any kind of node, text node, comment node, uh, element node, whatever you need, you can inject that into the page. All right, last step here was the click to automatic, automatically select the whole thing. So I'm going to select the entire header, copy that so I can paste it on later. Slightly different. With the click event, ev.target, that's the h1 element. I'm going to get the selection. So basically, this is just going to be sticking the cursor into the h1 element at some point. I'm going to say, okay, make sure there's no range selected. Firefox will allow you to select multiple ranges so you can take something and then add more content onto it. Uh, but that's not supported in all browsers and it's actually easier if you just if you want the whole thing just remove whatever's inside there and then dynamically add it and that's what i'm doing here the selection is where i've put my mouse cursor i'm going to create a new range a range is a bunch of characters that you can select this is my range it's empty right now and i'm going to for my range select h1.firstchild so why the first child? If we come up here, here's the H1 element. The first child of that is the text node. That's what we want. We want the text node that is inside of here. So we're taking the text node that is inside the H1, and then we're going to add that to our selection. So this range that we just created here we're going to insert that into the selection. This is the line that is actually highlight the whole selection, which is all the content inside the H1. So when I click, there it is. It's highlighted the whole thing. You can see I have selected all of the content inside the H1. The text node, we've selected the whole text node. And then this right here, this is me actually telling the browser, I want you to copy what I've got selected. So this is the part that's different than down here. Here, I'm calling the set data method to put something into the clipboard. Here, I'm telling the browser, whatever is currently selected, copy it. This will copy whatever selected, this content right here, onto the clipboard. This will actually trigger this method right here. So it says to the browser, I want you to act as if somebody just said copy whatever is selected. Well, I've got a listener for the copy event. That's going to trigger this do copy. And it runs through the same process as before, and that's why we're getting this console log from line 67. Right here or line 66 it was. If I save this, click, there it is. Line 67. That shows that our do copy function is running. All right, so that's copy and paste, the copy and paste event. The exec command, you can do that with copy and with paste as well if you want. And how you can click on something and select all the content or you can let the user select something and copy it and then how you can interact with that content when you're getting it back out of the clipboard to do some formatting. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.